I was so excited about the Wanaka Hike and Fly that I, I had the computer open ready to go the moment the countdown finished. So the race was kind of a key part of my motivation and planning for kind of, I guess, what's my first proper season of cross country. So it was an excuse to get my Volberv kit sorted and organised and, uh, and to go on some cool cross country missions down to Wanaka, um, the Craigie Burns and Arthur's Pass. Finally, February rolled round and then Squirt and I loaded up the, the Jimny and the Teardrop and made our way down to Wanaka. So we scraped into town in time for the, the course safety, airspace and land access briefing and then headed back out to Glendu campground to get gear sorted. Look at that, a double yoga. So once we got going, most of the field headed up the waterfall track uh, towards Roy's Peak. And my plan was to keep a fairly open mind, but most likely fly south along the range from Roy's Peak and pick up some turn points that way. It's a pretty steep hot slog up the waterfall track, but there are lots of stops for the views and heaps of weather and strategic conversations going on. Oh, that's one I got here. Oh, that's the Mount Pisa. Yeah, the Mount Pisa. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Oh wow, yeah, little, little tip tucks and stuff going on. Quite a westerly, eh? Look at the white mm. wing, how's he moving? Like a few of the later pilots, I picked a spot where the wind was a bit lighter, but this was because it was in a wind shadow and the air wasn't very clean. And then on my reverse launch, I also didn't catch the wing quick enough coming forward, I, um, I tripped and stumbled while I was turning and then I put my hands down for balance which didn't let the wing fly, I sort of made a bit of a mess of it and in hindsight should have just killed the wing and started again and it did throw my confidence a little bit. So earlier wings that got away had been slope soaring the westerly as it came up this face but it was also coming over the top and creating a bit of rotor and the wind speed at ridge top height was too fast for my, my wing and uh, in my skill level so I spent some time um, slope soaring briefly and then tried to head down these spurs which I'd had some luck on um, previous flights but the problem was there was so much shade along this face that not much was happening except for on these hot rocky faces down the bottom I came out a bit further onto some of these rocky hot faces and Spent quite a long time here, maybe 20 minutes. It felt like fighting around trying to um, get something that would get me out of here, but uh, wasn't getting anywhere. I'm in the groove now, I've got a mission and a better headspace. A bit of food every half an hour, something to drink every half an hour, and then let's keep walking. I uh, I made a bit of a, a whoops with my um my Google distance measuring, and so my grand plans to get up to the hut tonight uh, are not going to work. I'm going to be about an hour shy of the time I need to get up there before the 
uh, moving cut off for the race. Um, but that's okay, so what I'll do is I'll head to the bottom of the hill and uh, camp there for the night and then be ready to move in the morning. And so I've sort of readjusted my whole plan for the next day based on that, but I think that'll, that'll work out. So it means I can have dinner, have a good sleep, and then uh, blat up the hill in the morning. The other really cool thing about this is having a um, having a supporter. I just met uh, met Squirt part way along um, where the track crossed the road just before, and <clears throat> you know she was able to hand me some mixed up electrolyte drink, a banana, a chocolate bar, and um, and uh, I was able to grab like a fresh pair of inner soles and clean socks. It's freaking awesome. Heading up the shady slopes towards Pakatui Hut. Thermals will get it going later here today because of um, it being uh, a west facing slope. But uh, the upshot is that it'll be cooler for walking up the hill. At the moment, I'm the only person on this side of the course and it's taken me more than 30 k's and a thousand meters of climbing to get here so <laughs> hopefully I haven't made a monumental tactical blunder uh, by coming over this way I haven't seen any other wings in the air this way this morning conditions have been good and flyable for quite a while I just haven't been at a launchable site but no one else has flown over from anywhere else so I'm kind of looking forward to when I see the first other wing in the air to let me know that I'm not a complete idiot As I launched on this flight, I must have bumped the squelch button on my radio, which I assumed was safe because the keypad lock was on, but turns out that's not the case. And I now had loud static playing in my ear. I wasn't able to get the earpiece out because of my ear flaps, and I wasn't able to turn off the squelch because it was in a zipped up pocket. So the, the first 10 minutes I had this loud, incredibly distracting sound playing, and found it really hard to hear the video, uh, and, and it times even to think. So it, was, it, was, um, it messed with my head for a bit. On top of that, the air was doing interesting things here. So there was an easterly up high, there was an upslope westerly at launch, and out further it was southerly, producing some rotor on the lee of these spines. So I had to really watch that I didn't get too low and get into that rotor. But the climbs were drifting a lot, so I had to watch that I didn't drop out and end up in the lee of these spines that are below me in this shot here. But once I had a bit of height, um, I was able to, uh, to sort out the, the squelch, turn that off. I had a few other tech dramas here too. My phone got so hot in the sun waiting to launch on my flight deck that it, um, it stopped uh, tracking. And my GoPro also decided this was a good time to get too hot and quit as well. So my grand plan would have been to fly along Tag Breast Peak and then top land on Grandview, this hill just here, which was a ground waypoint and then go back to Pakatui Hut for the night. Right now I'm actually deliberately staying in an area of sink on Big Ears and Bar, trying to get down low enough to fight my way under a big cumulus, which was above Grandview. But um, I soon realised that I was going to struggle to actually get down to ground level, uh, and because I'm not particularly experienced with top landing yet. 
uh, and I was a bit tired, I decided to climb out again and instead head across and tag the Hawea flat turn point and then get across the flats, land and set myself up well for going up Mount Board the next day. More in the Koto. It's the morning of day three. I'm wandering along State Highway 6 on my way towards Hawea Campground and then I'm going to hang a left, climb up to Mount Maud and then from there see how close I can get back to the finish line flying. Now the Mount Moor track is a bit of a beast, especially the first couple of hundred metres up through steep pine needle covered slopes, but then it flattens out a bit and got some beautiful views back across Lake Hawea at the range I've been up on yesterday. When I got up onto the summit, um, there was some beautiful cumulus developing above. So I've been sitting here for a while now. Um, I've only had a really short run for a Ford takeoff, a, you know, a Ford launch, but um, uh, that's okay as long as I have a little bit of upslope breeze and I'm beginning the odd little cycle coming through. But with these big beasts straight above, Basically, it's just sucking up very gently on, on all sides. Now, as the afternoon was getting on, I'm now at the point where if I don't launch and have to go back by foot, I won't make the race cut off and will get a 10-point penalty. So uh, it was my best interest to wait and get the perfect launch uh, and just be patient. There were three cumulus and a dotted line between me and Albert Town, so I tried to link those up. Caught the first two, but missed the third. It was just starting to die before I got to it. What a magnificent sky. This is just... This is just awesome! <laughs> oh, plastic bag aircraft! Those hay paddocks look like a great source, they're a little bit sheltered from the wind so the heat can build up a wee bit. Interesting to see what happens going over those. So they were producing something but it was pretty light and it was drifting a lot because of the wind coming down off the lake. So uh, I stuck with it and managed to hold on to it for a while but I was drifting so much that eventually I was starting to head away from my intended destination. So I eventually had to pull the pin on that and start heading back towards Albert Town and uh, that was it was pretty sinky and into wind so I had to do a bit of that on bar. So that's Mount Maud. Where did this come from? <laughs> On the home stretch now, just coming back into Wanaka, not far from the finish line. It's been cold, I've had a, had a hoot. Uh, it's been a good kind of physical blast. I haven't got out and pushed my body like this for a while, but also um, just learned a heap. Walking back from the prize giving, it was cool to hear some of the other stories from folks. Uh, some pretty, some pretty gnarly adventures. People flying some very big distances, going quite deep, 
Auckland, which is you know, quite different from my, my wee adventure, which was all mostly with inside of Wanaka. But uh, yeah, it was it was cool hearing that and, and catching a bunch of hot tips from people. They still don't try and think like a non-hiker. I think often my natural go-to approach to uh, solving any issue during this event was walk some more. Um, but um, I think if I thought more like someone who doesn't like walking, then uh, I may have gotten a bit more flying done. So it was awesome. And thanks uh, to Kinga and the crew for organising it. Kia ora.